I'm going to try to restore this cordless drill. I've never done anything like this before. Let's take a look. It's a Makita 6093D. Battery charger. Battery one. Battery two. Drill. Big thanks to Gear Show for giving me the uh, inspiration to do this. I'll link to his channel down in the comments. First thing, thing to do is remove the, ch the, the screw that holds it in and the inside down there is uh, reverse threaded. So that means you got to turn it the other way than you normally would. Lock a hex key in the chuck and bash it off. It took me days to finally bash off the end, but it does work. What you got to do is that I had to put this in a vise because you need this nice and stiff as possible. Because if, if there's any kind of vibration in here, when you whack it, it's just going to vibrate. What you need, you need all that force to go into the chuck. Just keep trying. I had to use a lubricant and uh, oh, let it sit for a while, but you can bash it off. Remember, this is a regular thread, unlike the, the reverse thread. Use a Phillips head 2 screwdriver to take out the eight screws. Remove the two screws on the speed collar. Now the speed collar just pops off. Now we can separate the two halves. Doesn't look too bad other than the grease. Let's get everything out of here. This is the high-low selector and you can see it pushes the, uh, the different gears into position. Lifts off from the front. The trigger assembly and motor lift right out. Huh. I have a feeling that the problem might just be uh, corroded battery terminals. To take apart the uh, forward part, the uh, spring, little gold stopper thing and washer, as well as the big wheel just come right off. Next, push down uh, this one, and you can see the, uh, the pin that holds it in there. What you want to do is then knock that out the side, and then that'll free up this wheel and the spring. To get the E-clip off so you can get the bearings off, what you want to do is that you want to put it into a vise so it can't t turn, and then get a flathead screwdriver and stick it in there, and then uh, give it a whack with a hammer and it'll come right off. The bearings are still pressed on there, so you're going to have to press them out. I don't have a press, so I'm going to have to do this bootleg way. I'm going to put the uh, put it in there, and then put a piece of wood on top of the spindle so I'm not making direct contact with it, and then start hammering it out. Hopefully this works and I don't break it. It only took about three good strikes to get the bearing out. Now remember that the uh, this lip is actually wider than the top part, so you've got to be sure that the smaller part's on top. The little gold bushings just uh, come right off, see? Just like that, that easy. This part's a little trickier to take out because both this bearing is pressed on and this gear. So what we're going to do is that we're going to get a center punch and, uh, and put it in there and tap it out while uh, while this is sitting up in the vise like that, uh, with uh, you know just sitting there not crushing it. Now that the bearing sandwich is out, what you want to do is uh, get that little pin right out of there. That will release the uh, the big thing here and all that. We won't be trying to get this gear off. Uh, there's no reason to. There's no bearing or anything in there. You just got to clean it all up. It'll be fine. Now that everything's apart, what you want to do is get yourself some uh, some brake cleaner here. Oh, where is that? There we go. Brake parts cleaner. Hose them down and wipe them off. It's uh, pretty good stuff. There we go. Yeah. All right. Clean them all up. To get in between the teeth, I'm going to use my brother's toothbrush and just get all that crap out of there. Going both ways is good. Then use some shop towels to clean them off. Get all that gunk off there. The point of doing this is replacing your bearings. So get some new ones and uh, bump that old one out of there. Always replace them. Never try to fix them. Bearings have a number marking on uh, on on the top of them, and I'll link to a, a list of what uh, every word means. What's funny about this one is that it has S at the end, which uh, it looks like a rubber seal, but then it's marked with R S now. The S signification is just so old that it's it's not even used anymore. Now I'm going to manually remove as much grease as I can with a shop towel. Now that everything's all clean in, we have the new bearing. It's time to put it all back together again, like this. The cross pin needs to line up with the holes in this thing. Put some grease into the four holes. Put the ball bearings into the holes. Now you want to align the ball bearings with the cutouts in, uh, in this thing that you just put on before. Then put on the small washer. And then put the new bearing on top of that. And then kind of press it down just for a temporary fit before you could uh, pound it back down. I didn't have to press the bearing on. Now all that's left is that you just got to squeeze the uh, snap ring on there. And the little gold bushing goes on the end. I should have done this before, but the little rollers on the uh, on the sandwich here, they need to be greased too. You can kind of see them. It's a little difficult. 
using a vice, a hammer, and the wood tapper thing, we're going to uh, set the bearing. When you tap this bearing on, be sure it sits under that little groove where the eclipse sits. It's got to be fully under there. See that there? It's, it's it's small, but you can see it. Push the eclipse back on using a set of pliers and applying the pressure on the on the middle one, and then put the other thing here and just kind of head on. Spring washer. Move up the small gear. Flat side of the small gear goes down. While holding the small gear down, uh, uh set the little pin in there. Collar. I put some grease in between the collar and the pins there. Because uh, the big gear goes on next and its grooves go down into uh, into the collar area. Washer! Another spring! The washer and the gold collar go on next, but uh, see there's not much room here. So what we're going to do is that we're going to assemble that in the case. The motor seems to be in pretty good shape except for these tabs where the batteries came on. So what we're going to do first is that I'm going to use a small file to file these, uh, to file it uh, back so the copper and take off this corrosion. Then we'll test it. I would use a vinegar treatment on these, but I can't get them off, so I gotta work with them while they're still there, and that's, uh, you know, sensitive equipment and whatnot. Here, the terminal's all cleaned up. Let's test it with the battery. The labels are one of the more important things on these things. The problem is, is that they're irreplaceable, and you can see this one's kind of messed up. So what I'm going to do is take some pack, clear packing tape and put it over the whole thing and then slowly pull it all up. That way it could be uh, in one piece and then I could reset it back down. Out from the opposite, out from the opposite side. What we're going to do is uh, fill some tub up with water and get some uh, baking soda in there. I don't know, I guess that, uh, yeah, sure, that sounds about right. Mix it around in there and uh, we'll get an old toothbrush and start scrubbing. I got a cameraman for this one so I can actually show you what I'm doing. You know, there's no magic to it. You just gotta, you just need some elbow grease and keep going like this. All right, keep going for about 10 hours. To clean the rust off the bolts and the other little hardware, what we're going to do is a mixture of uh, table salt and then... Uh, White, uh, white vinegar, I'm gonna pour that in there, let it sit for probably about a day, and then, uh, you know, it's non-corrosive, no chemicals, you know, it'll be good. All right, there we go. So here they are all cleaned up, and, uh, you know, it, they do look better, but some stuff is just really ingrained in there, and, uh, you know, it's good enough. Also, remember to uh, clean your other plastic bits. I should have said that. I uh, should have said that before. Now I'm going to use some super glue, also called CA glue, to uh, to glue on some uh, plastic parts that kind of snapped off the screw holes and stuff like that. I'm going to use super glue to set uh, to set the sticker on here, since the sticky stuff is all messed up now that I pulled it off once. Here are the screws after a day, and you can see all the dirt that's coming off. And next, I'm going to scrub them down, wash them off, dry them up, and uh, you, let's let's do it. Look at that! The hardware looks brand new. Now I'm going to put the nuts back into the holes. Remember the orientation on this is actually, uh, it actually matters. Look, see, if you turn it this way, then you got the pointy ends. They won't sit in the, uh, in the sides. They're going to be like that. Well, if they're all in with the help of a little bit of persuasion of a needle and those pliers, it's going to be... The two gear sets sit here and here. So that means we've got to put a ton of grease here and here because, you know, think of these things flying around. you got to got to keep them nice, uh, juiced up for, uh, you know, 50 years. Slide the keychuck holder back in, even though it doesn't have a keychuck, yeah, whatever. Remember to grease the high-low spindle. Set the lower gear set in. As you're setting the upper gear set in, this is where you gotta uh, compress the spring so that you can get the washer and the nut uh, on there. Now that everything's in there, you gotta grease, grease, grease. You want that, 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 anything where any metal-on-metal metal contact that moves gotta be grease, and it's gotta be grease good. Don't forget to put grease in the other side. Grease, grease, grease! Put this little strip in here so the detent faces forward. Put the high-low selector so the spindle is jammed in between the two gears. I forgot to put the large washer right on the end of here. I gotta take this all up, put it on there. Don't be like me! Grease up the spindle motor end and uh, slot it in there. These two little detents match up with the indents on the trigger. When putting the two halves of the clamshell together, the hardest part is aligning the, the little metal tab thing and the switch. I find sl slide the switch over so it's uh, snug in there and uh, hopefully uh, good luck. Grease up the top of this little metal selector thing and put it back into its housing. Screw the shell back together with the longer bolts going in the forward holes. When screwing back in the clip, remember the clip closes forward. Put the two half collars into uh, the slots on the side of the chuck. Push the speed selector collar onto, uh, onto the end there. Be sure you got the little yellow arrow uh, at the numbers. 
Uh, you're gonna have to push it down because it's spring loaded to, to screw it in. Once it's on, be sure you can get to all the speeds. If not, that means that it's uh, misadjusted. You're gonna have to take it off and move it a spot and then uh, set it back down. Screw the chuck on! Screw the chuck onto the spindle. Remember, this thread is a reverse thread. We're going to clean the contacts of the batteries with some ipropopyl alcohol and, uh, and uh, file them down if needed. Testing the batteries, one of them has about 10 volts. The other battery is low at 3.8 volts, so we'll see if this uh, charge is not only charges, but see if it holds a charge. To test the charger, get your multimeter and uh, put it on volts, and then you see you got the positive and the negative, so if we stick it on there, we get 16.7 uh, DC volts. Now it says the output is 9.6, so uh, I don't know, let's see if it charges the batteries. The light's on, which signals that it's charging. When this goes out, that means the battery is fully charged. After completely charging, it looks like we get about 10.67 volts on each one. Now let's test the endurance. So after about uh, 10 seconds of charging, we lost uh, 0 0.05 of a volt, which uh, 10 volt, 10.5, it was about 35 minutes of running power per battery. I think that's pretty good. The charger works, so all we're going to do is uh, clean up the shell. First thing you got to do is the four screws on the bottom. Lift the tabs out. Lift the connector out of that seal in the back. Like that. Flip it back over. Bam! Time for the scrub down of baking soda and water. I'm not going to do the case because I can't get this paint anywhere, I don't know how to take rust off, I don't want to ruin this sticker. Basically, this one, eh, it's beyond me. And there you have it! Uh, one thing that I desperately learned is that uh, don't use uh, uh, brake cleaner on plastic parts, it stains them. Well, live and learn, not bad for my first one.